Professor Pielo Lumumba to make his speech. Karibu sana. Thank you very much, as is typical from uh, profiles obtained from the Google, a few mistakes have been made. <laughs> Let me begin by acknowledging uh, the presence of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, retired General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, Permit me also to recognize uh, the chair of PEACA, uh, the uh, deputy speaker of the parliament of Uganda, uh, the speaker of IALA, cabinet ministers here present, members of parliament, and also to mention the Mashariki Fest, of my good friend Tendo, who was very key in coordinating and midwifing my presence here uh, this afternoon. Uh, let me say that I am honored and privileged to be asked to share my thoughts with you on uh, the subject, uh, the role of parliamentarians in the integration process. When one is asked to deliver a keynote speech of this kind, particularly in the presence of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, who is an East African, as he'll have occasion to tell you, one can be pretty reticent but I'll not allow myself to be. I will allow myself to share my thoughts by way of going back to the past, but without repeating some of the nostalgic moments that were so very ably articulated by my good friend, the Right Honorable Amanya Mushega. But yet, in the context of what is happening now, it is important to remind ourselves that when we are talking about integration as we are now, we are talking about integration of the post-colonial era. And many will remember that the countries that we so cherish today are the products of a very harsh reality of European powers in 1884 and 1885, which means that the boundaries that we are so fond of are artificial boundaries. And their artificiality has been articulated by the testimonies we have heard from members of parliament who live on the borders of our countries. And it is instructive that even as we were reclaiming our independence, some of the founding fathers of the African nation were very conscious that if Africa and indeed East Africa were to thrive, then it was necessary that we act as one. We will remember uh, the very well publicized desire by the late president of Tanzania, Mwalimu Kambarage Nyerere, that the independence of Tanzania or Tanganyika then be delayed so that Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania would regain their independence as one country. Those were, in my view, the embryonic stages of the desire for an integrated East Africa. You will also remember beyond the continent of Africa, the conference of the Organization of African Unity in 1963 in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, 
and the subsequent conference in Cairo in 1964 where the doctrine of the inviolability of inherited boundaries was embraced in the hope that we would integrate and that those boundaries will merely become administrative boundaries. Those of you who are a little older will also remember that when we regained independence, no sooner had we settled in than East African community as we then knew it started the process of integration which culminated in Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania acting and serving under the East African community in 1967. Testimonies have already been given of those golden years. We have heard stories about how good the East African Railways was. We have heard how it was possible for a Ugandan to work in Kenya and how possible it was for a Kenyan to work in Kasese and for a Tanzanian to work in Uganda and for a Kenyan to work in Tabora. We celebrated those institutions. We have been told about the postal union, the telecommunications. We have been told about the East African Airways. We will remember fondly the University of East Africa, how it was easy for a Kenyan medical student to study in Mulago and for a Ugandan student to study law at the University of Dar es Salaam and for a Ugandan student to study engineering at the University of Nairobi, we are all nostalgic about those days. We then ask ourselves why it is that recognizing the value of unity as we do and as we appreciate, why is it that in 1977 our countries went out? What brought about the centrifugal forces that saw Uganda go its way, saw Kenya go its way, saw Tanzania go its way, saw that we were disunited? Commentators, whether they are politicians or political scientists or just idle speakers, would say many things happen. Some would say that it was ideological differences of the leaders of the day. Some would say that there were forces from outside of the continent whose desire is that we remain in a state of disunity. All those assessments are possibly true. But even after we had lost our opportunity for deepening our unity in 1977. It cannot be denied that the desire for unity and the desire for the East African community always remained alive. And that is why, therefore, when in 1908, 99, the movement to re-establish the East African community came alive. It was at once sentimental, at once nostalgic, at once visionary, and I'm glad to say that it happened in the presence and through the joint midwifery of the President of the Republic of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. He remains one of, of the midwives at that time he is the only one who is still alive to give us a true testimony of the thinking of the day. But we who are students of history remember that when we thought about creating the East African community, we reminded ourselves that never again shall we make the mistakes that were made by our forebearers, that never again shall we have a misstep that never again shall we allow ourselves to be divided by narrow interests that never again shall we allow myopic views to stand in the way of a good project that never again will we allow the newly created east african community 
to be a body that stands up in the air without being grounded in the minds and hearts of the people. And it is in my understanding that the treaty under whose aegis the East African community is now rested is designed to ensure that the people of East African community is indeed located not only in their hearts but in the minds of the people of East Africa. I remember that when I read Article 5.2 of the treaty, the very deliberate effort which was people-centered, the statement that we start with a customs union so that the people of East Africa would trade without let and hindrance, that we would go then into the next phase of a common market and that ultimately we would go into a monetary union and that ultimately we would have a political federation. Those are sometimes described by the Romanticists as the four pillars upon which East African community stands. But the question that we are here to ask ourselves this afternoon is now that we are on the path of unity, how have we performed? Have we learned the lessons of the past? Have we understood where we want to go? Are our people wedded to the ideals of the East African community? Are we moving with jet-like speed to realize the desired federation? His Excellency will remember when he and his colleagues met in Nairobi on the 27th and 29th days of August, the year 2004. And Your Excellency will remember then, you issued a communique on the 28th day of August. And you'll remember then, Your Excellency, that many statements were made. You will remember your colleague, the President of Kenya, then the late Mwai Kibaki, saying that indeed, East African community is significant because we cannot continue to divide the people who are culturally joined at the hip. You will remember your colleague, the late Benjamin William Kappa, saying, we cannot afford the luxury of disunity because a united East Africa will create a common market which will ensure that our people realize their goals and desires. Your Excellency, you are the more dramatic of the three on that day. You said, and permit me to remember what you said, that we cannot allow East Africa to be continue to be balkanized, nor can we allow Africa to continue to be balkanized in 53 countries which are weak and which are incapable of negotiating with other parts of the world we must stop that balkanization. You said that, Your Excellency. Today, Your Excellency, in your very presence, we are interrogating the question as to whether we are still balkanized. And Your Excellency, if you permit me to be honest and candid, the, the steps we have made thus far must be celebrated, but we could have done better. We could have done better because, Your Excellency, you will also remember you yourselves on, in the year 2004 were so dissatisfied with the pace of integration that in 2004 you empaneled a body constituting representatives from all the three countries to fast track political federation. They went round East Africa. They went to Uganda, they took the pulse of the politicians, they went to Tanzania, took the pulse of the politicians, they came to Kenya, took the pulse of the politicians, and they did not stop there. They went to the business community and took their pulse. They went to the universities and took their pulse. They went everywhere and they submitted a report to you in the year 2005, 2005 
in which they claimed, and I use the word claim deliberately, Your Excellency, they claimed that the East Africans had declared unequivocally that they wanted integration urgently. And they said that by the year 2013, we would become one federation. They said that by the year 2013, we would, one, one, we would have one East African president. They said, they said that we would have one currency. They said good things. But the reality, which is a sad reality, is that we are nowhere near realizing those goals. Which then begs the question, what can we therefore do? Because it is true that our diagnosis of our problem is right. We know what we ought to do. We have made many declarations. We have created many institutions. We have the East African Legislative Assembly, which is functional. We have the East African Court of Justice, which is functional. We have other institutions which are functional. But yet there is a sense in which we have not made the nuclear decision. And let me be understood to mean when I say the nuclear decision, the decision that will change the matters in such a fundamental way that the farmer sitting in Gulu, when he is asked about East Africa, he or she can relate to it. The nuclear decision that will ensure that somebody sitting in Iringa can relate to the East African community. The reality that when somebody is sitting in Meru in Kenya will be able to identify with the East African community. That is what we are looking for. And today we are assembled here to interrogate ourselves. We are assembled here to ask ourselves uncomfortable but necessary questions. We are assembled here to ask ourselves what then it is that we can do to move the agenda forward and to move the agenda forward in a manner that is conscious of the fact that if we don't expedite the process of federation, the process of unification, then we will become sitting ducks for those whose diabolical intentions and scheme not only require but demand that we remain in our state of disunity. Your Excellency, you will remember several years ago you said when we were talking about East African community and you are talking about the insignificance of our small markets. If my memory serves me well, and it normally does, Your Excellency, you asked, why should Kenya say that it has a big economy, bigger than what? Why should Tanzania say that it has an even slightly bigger economy than Uganda? And Uganda say that it has a bigger economy than Sudan. Your Excellency then said, that is an exercise in futility. It is three dwarfs trying to argue which one is taller than the other. They are all dwarfs, even if one is taller than the other. I'm submitting to Your Excellency that we cannot continue to be dwarfs. If we are dwarfs, the growth hormone the steroid that will make us grow taller is federation. And I'm submitting that we have the intellectual wherewithal because we remember that a federated East African community will be a building block for a federated Africa. And I am aware that we have now expanded the Democratic Republic of Congo is now with us. I'm aware that South Sudan is now with us. I'm aware that Rwanda is now with us, that Burundi is now with us, 
I'm also aware that the Somalis have also indicated their desire to be with us. We are some kind of magnet that is attracting others. But before we consolidate, what then it, is it that we can do? Because Your Excellency and Honorable Members here are present, we must remember that we are, as we are talking about Federation of East Africa, there is no shortage of individuals out there who would not want us to unite. If you did not know, but I suspect you do, there is a new scramble for Africa. That scramble for Africa requires and demands that Uganda remains alone, that Tanzania remains alone, that Kenya remains alone. The only way in which we can immunize ourselves against the diabolical machinations of the new scramblers for Africa is our unity. And I'm submitting to us that you who are members of, Af of East African community, members of the East African Legislative Assembly, what is it that you can do? You must constitute yourselves into missionaries of old. Go out there with zeal. It is not the shortage of protocols that we have a problem with. It is not the lack of clarity of treaties that we have a sh problem with. It is our commitment, it is our desire to go out into our villages and hamlets and to ensure that we have men and women who when they go to Arusha, they are missionary, they have the missionary zeal and they are talking about East Africa. I now know that in the interim period, IALA members are elected by respective parliaments. I look forward to the day when that will be a thing of the past and you shall be elected by universal suffrage. I look forward to that day because it is only in those days that we'll then be able to animate the people of East Africa so that they are better able to appreciate that there is an agenda in Arusha which must be undertaken. I look forward to that day. I look forward to the day in parliamentarians in the respective countries when what happens in Arusha is much more important than what happens in Kampala. You know... Sometimes we protect very little things. I remember an old story. Many times when we are told you want 100% of a rabbit, you think 100% of a rabbit is bigger than 10% of an elephant. I'm urging you to go for 10% of the elephant that East African Federation. Because it is only in that way that we will be able to change this continent. Your Excellency, I remember on the 6th day of March, 1997, the former president of Tanzania, Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere, was invited on the occasion of the celebration of the 40th anniversary of the independence of Ghana. And on that day, Mwalimu was as enlightened as he was visionary, as he was passionate, he said, the generation to which I belong made their contribution. We made our contribution by midwifing our respective countries from the womb of the colonizers. In the process we made many mistakes, but in the process we also made many things and made monumental contribution to the process. It is the duty of each generation to recognize what their duty is. Our generation did their part. This generation must now take Africa to the next level. Mwalimu proceeded as he was speaking to say, whenever I travel outside of the continent of Africa, nobody cares about our Ugandan nest. Nobody cares about our Tanzanian ness. Nobody cares about our Kenyan ness. Nobody cares about our Congo ness. They only care about our African ness. And to me, the statement therefore is nobody cares about our little countries, but they care about our East African ness. History has placed upon our laps. 
the opportunities to make a change. And Your Excellency, as I conclude, because conclude I must, you are now the elder statesman in East Africa. We know what the legislators must do. We know that they must legislate. Permit me now to use this occasion to address you directly with due respect. When history is written, Your Excellency, I want it to be said of you that as the elder statesman in East Africa, you presided over the creation of an East African Federation. Let it be said of you that during your watch, that is the period during which we had an East African currency. Let it be said of you that it is during your watch that we had one East Africa with one president. Let it be said on you. Your Excellency, I look forward to those days and I'm asking the heavens to preserve me that I may see them. Your Excellency, we are in a good space and I have no doubt that those of us who are assembled here today will be able to say that East Africans are hungry and thirsty for a federation. Let us be the midwives that will ensure that that is achieved. Thank you very much and God bless you.